Alrighty, folks, here it is, the first ever tutorial from me, Dave, at uh, photosforyoutc.net. Today I'm going to show you how to combine two images in Photoshop to make one uh, spectacular image that is better than the sum of its parts. Uh, today's picture is going to be this picture of uh, the portal at Big Sur down at Julia Pfeiffer State Beach. I was taking pictures there on my tripod and got lucky and got a frame with these uh, two seagulls going through it. And, however, not much else interesting is going on in the frame. So the next frame I took here is timed with the splash coming through the cave and it was a lot more interesting. So what we're going to do is put these seagulls and the splash over on this side of the frame in the same picture as this. We're going to stack them up in Photoshop and we're going to show you how right here. Stay tuned. Okay, so here we go. We're going to combine these two images in Photoshop. So our first step is to uh, open uh, one of the raw files here into Photoshop. So I just locate the picture here that I want to use. And uh, I usually have the choice. I could use a seagull picture or the picture without the seagull first. I like to use the one that's going to compose most of the background of the picture. And open that one first. And that's going to be this picture with just the cave and not the seagulls. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one you open first, it's a matter of style. But here I go, I'm drag and drop that one into Photoshop, and bam, there it opens. Um, earlier I already set up all these uh, presets here in uh, the RAW converter, so you can see this picture looks a lot better than the original JPEG. Maybe in another lesson I will run through the RAW conversion. It's a uh, get too long if I try to cover that in this lesson. But anyhow, what you want to do when you're opening two pictures, the important thing is to uh, save the presets because you want uh, this all these raw settings to be the same for both your images so they line up correctly and the colors look right when you merge them together. So the way to do that easily is you go over this presets menu, click on that, and then you go down to create new preset. That brings up this little dialog here. All you got to do is name it. Uh, I'm going to call this one uh, Portal 9 and uh, hit OK and there we go. So now we're ready to open the image and we'll open it in Photoshop here. Uh, my computer's running real slow because I'm uh, recording this uh, screencast here. So there it is. All right, next step is to uh, find your other image you're going to use and uh, drag and drop that into Photoshop. And there it is. This one, notice I didn't fix uh, the raw settings on this. It still looks all blue and kind of crummy. But rather than having to do all that again. I'll just go over here to the presets menu, find that portal 9, that's what I saved earlier, and click on that. Look at that, amazing. The same raw settings as the last file. So it'll save me some time, and everything is going to be an exact match here. So when I open it, it's going to match the other image. So I open that, see it says uh, preparing smart object. When you're opening two files, it automatically saves, a, opens the second one as a smart object. Which is no big deal, it just adds an extra step here. Um, first thing we have to do is hit the check mark to place the file. And since it's a smart object, we go over to uh, Layer, Smart Objects, and uh, Rasterize, and that'll fix it. So now we're, we're dealing with no smart objects. Someone smarter than me can probably figure out a way to switch the default so it doesn't uh, open it like that. But anyways, that's what we can do. We got your two two pictures open now. You can see it on the layer palette. Here's the image with the seagulls. I can turn that off, turn the eyeball icon off, and you can see the image below it with the CK with the wave coming in. So uh, that's what we got to work with. We're going to combine the two. The first thing we have to do though is make sure they're aligned perfectly. So I'm going to hit the hold the control key down and click on the background. See how both images in the layer palette are now highlighted. I go over to uh, Edit, Auto Align Layers. This is the nifty little feature of Photoshop. Just use the Auto Mode, hit OK. And that's going to line up like all these little crevices and cracks. Make everything line up perfectly. So if my tripod, even though this is taken on a tripod, the tripod might have moved a little bit. So this Auto Align makes things line up nice and perfect. Something I'd like to do. So there we go. We have uh, the two layers are now aligned. Um, now, what are we going to do here to get the seagulls in one picture, or 
in the same frame as the beam of light coming through the sea cave and the, the wave. And the answer is we're going to apply a layer mask. It's real easy. Go down to see this button down here. It looks like a rectangle with a donut hole in the middle. We're going to uh, create a new layer mask, but we're going to do a tricky one here. We're going to create a black layer mask. So hold down the Alt key and uh, click on the Create New Layer Mask button. That's going to open, create, look at that, a black mask. That means that uh, this image is completely obscured. The top image with the seagulls is obscured by this black mask. So what we're going to do is magically make these seagulls reappear. So we select the brush tool. A quick way to do that is keyboard shortcut B. There we go. We got our brush tool opens up. And you can use the bracket keys to make the brush bigger and smaller. There we go. I have a new brush. And go over here and set the opacity. I'm going to go crazy and go up to 100% and click over here where these seagulls are. Look at that. Magic. Like magic. The seagulls reappear. And look over here where I painted on the mask. That's white. That's where you can see through the mask. You can see the seagulls. So remember I wanted the seagulls and I wanted the uh, the uh, splash that was down here. So I'm going to also uh, paint in where the splash was. Look at that. Very pretty. The splash comes back. So now we got the seagulls and uh, we got the splash. It's starting to look like a Hallmark card or something. Um, there's another thing I might want to do. I was thinking maybe there's some splash down here. Maybe I'm going to put that in here. I'll try that. I'll set my brush opacity to 5. Just play around and uh, start painting that and see if that looks good. Eh. It might be kind of a mess. I don't know if I like to have that in my uh, picture. Looks like too much going on. See that? I got the white painted in here. So it looks ugly. I don't like it. There's two ways you can get rid of it. You can hit Control Alt Z and just backwards step all those brush strokes out. Or you can just go back with your brush and paint. Hit the X key. See down here? X makes you turns your brush from white to black, black to white. X, X, X switches back and forth. You can paint in black too and build that mask back up black where you uh, where you don't want this upper image showing. So there you have it all. It looks pretty decent. This is uh, the plain old sea cave. No seagull, no splash. And there it is with uh, the splash. Um, you might want to play around down here too. Set the brush opacity. Switch it back to white. You'll make the 40% brush opacity and paint in a little bit of the light color here. I don't know if I like that. I'm going to switch back to black. Go maybe to 20% and paint that out. So you can get all crazy with this and, and, uh, and uh, really tweak this up to your heart's content depending on uh, what you want to do with it. So that's about it. I think that's it. I would uh, go in and probably do a couple more uh, just uh, curve edits in here. But uh, as far as combining the two uh, the two images, that's it. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thanks for putting up with my uh, first ever video tutorial. Please leave any suggestions, and uh, and uh, maybe if I get enough comments, I'll go ahead and make the raw conversion tutorial too. Now that I have this video stuff, the sky's the limit. So get ready.